Starting off at number 10 now, we have Leave. This one comes from a Reddit user who owes his life to a stranger or some supernatural force. See what you guys think. They say, I was stationed in Seoul, South Korea several years ago. I was taking a shower in my room and when I got out, the word leave was written in small letters in the fog on the bathroom mirror. I don't have a roommate because we get our own private rooms there. A little freaked out, I decided to do exactly that. I left. I went off for some Korean barbecue and wandered the city a bit. I came back a couple of hours later to find the barracks were evacuated and half burnt to the ground. The fire was pinpointed to faulty electrical wiring that caught some insulation on fire inside the walls. Someone or something knew that was going to happen and to this day, whatever that something was, it didn't want me in the middle of it. I gladly thank who or whatever it is if they give me the chance, but it's been years and I still have no idea. Coming in at number 9, we have the story of the boy and the girl. Now this story comes from my auntie Jenny. You guys don't know my auntie, in some ways we're pretty similar and in other ways we're absolutely not. My auntie, I'm sure she wouldn't mind me saying this, is an excellent woman but also somewhat formidable. She is a no nonsense midwife and you absolutely cannot pull the wool over her eyes. She is the last person that I would expect to believe a ghost story. But a few years back, she herself had an experience that made her question her beliefs. Let me tell you about it. So my auntie is remarried and initially, as I'm sure you can imagine with teenage kids as they were back then, her children weren't that happy and that kind to her new husband as perhaps they could have been, especially my eldest female cousin who really didn't get on with him. One day my auntie's husband Colin lost his watch, it was a very expensive watch, it was a family heirloom that he cared about a lot. He searched high and low for this watch, everywhere, in the bathroom, in his jeans pockets, in his coat pockets, in the bedside table, under the bed, behind the bed, in the car, you name it. He looked for it everywhere but he didn't find anything. Fuming, my auntie thought that the kids were playing yet another trick on her new husband. She was complaining about them on her coffee break at work to her friends, but oddly, one of the newer nurses looked at her and said simply in a really matter of fact way, your children don't have the watch, the boy and girl have it. To which obviously my auntie replied, what boy and girl? The woman said, almost a bit surprised by the questioning of the boy and girl, she said, well, the boy and the girl. They're always with you. They've always been with you. Go home and ask for them for the watch back and they will return it. Perplexed and bemused, my auntie basically just amused the woman by saying that yeah, she'd do it, but she didn't actually plan to. Although when she got home, something possessed her to just give it a go. So she stood in her house alone and saying to the thin air, she said, give it back please give me back the watch. She didn't think too much more of it. I mean that being said, she thought about her weird colleague and she told my nana about it on the phone but she didn't think it would amount to anything. Until my nana stopped for a moment and said, well actually, that's really weird because come to think of it, when you were little you used to have two imaginary friends, a boy and a girl. You would walk around the garden with your arms out holding their hands, or so you'd say. My auntie and my mum did grow up on an old farm dating back to the Victorian times, it was kind of creepy. Well this actually really freaks my auntie out. But the icing on the cake came the next morning. Her husband put on his coat to leave the house and slid his hand into the pocket. What did he find? None other than his missing gold watch. My auntie thanked the boy and the girl for its safe return. Coming into number 8, we have the comet. So this story comes from a night out I had with my friend Hayley, who used to work as a producer here on Most Amazing Top 10. So we went to an amazing night hosted by Hendrix Gin and they had all kinds of curious and mystical things there. They had a theremin player, a hot air balloon, a magician, a piano with cucumbers for keys and of course gin on tap. But what they also had was a tarot card reader. Believe what you want, but this card reader was said to have been hired by Beyonce in the past, so I was pretty excited to talk to her. So was Haley. I sat and listened to what she had to say to Haley. Now she told her that in a previous life she'd been a comet, and she was absolutely adamant about this. Now, if you knew Haley, then you'd believe it. I don't know, something in the way that she was just so certain about it was really strange to me. She said she could see her there flying through space, super determined. Again, call it what you want, but for me, like, 
it was very, very weird. It did make me question a lot of things. What did she say about me? She said that I'm a source of joy for my friends and that I'll live a very abundant life. She also told me I need to go to Japan to reconnect with my past life, so here's hoping. Number seven, we have SpaghettiOs. So this story was posted on Reddit seven years ago by Project Zeta, who said, One time I spilled a bowl of SpaghettiOs, and as I was cleaning them, I looked up and noticed that there was one on the ceiling, nine feet up. I didn't even drop the bowl, I just tipped it onto the counter by mistake. But sure enough, a single O was right there, stuck to the ceiling. So weird. Now this story got nearly 600 upvotes, and I don't think I can explain what was going on other than SpaghettiOs broke reality somehow. Maybe the chaos theory gone sky. So while we are chatting cats, let's have a spin on this at number 6. We have psychic death cats. In a previous part of this video, we talked about Oscar the therapy cat who could predict when people would die. He just knew. But after reading this next story, I'm actually pretty convinced that cats know more than we think, and they're evil little schemers. Redditor Jeff Utch wrote a post that reads, My cat hated me for the first seven years we had him. He was a feral that was tamed by my wife and only accepted affection from her. My wife assured me that this was common for ferals. Then. One day, he suddenly warmed up to me and wanted me to pet him. We've been best friends ever since. This was approximately four years ago, about the time that my wife's brain cancer was becoming aggressive. He said that it was even before the time that they were aware of it and she died two years later. He ended the story by saying, it's like he knew it was going to be the two of us one day. Okay, so that is both incredibly sad and incredibly terrifying. I'm really, really, really sorry for your loss. And I absolutely really hate to say this to you, but your cat is playing you. It's like he knew that you would need to be the human to feed him, so he started sucking up to you. Nonetheless, I do feel like cats have a creepy sixth sense. I used to have a cat called Dylan, and we had a really, really horrible accident when I was little, and my dad was pretty badly injured. Before the accident, Dylan absolutely loved my dad. He would always curl up on him and try and sit on his head, but afterwards, he wouldn't go anywhere near him. It was the weirdest thing. Cats. Evil. Crazy. Bloop. Moving on to number 5 now, we have teleportation. Do you guys believe that teleportation can happen? This story makes it sound like you just have to believe really hard to make it happen. Reddit user Avengelina1021 said, I always remember this and do not have an explanation for it. When I was about 4 or 5 years old, I remember waking up in the middle of the night and walking to the stairs. I remember closing my eyes for a second at the top of the stairs, and when I opened them, I would be at the bottom of the stairs. I would run upstairs and close my eyes, and the same thing Thing would happen again. It happened at least four or five times until my parents called me to go to bed because they could hear me run up the stairs. It's weird because I was totally wide awake and do not have a history with sleepwalking. I still think about it and wonder how that was possible. Before we're talking birthmarks, there have been a lot of stories connecting people's birthmarks to injuries in previous lives. The former head of the psychiatry department at the University of Virginia, Dr. Ian Stevenson, spent a large chunk of the 19th 60s researching the link between those who say they remember their past lives and their current life birthmarks. The theory is, is that the birthmark marks how you died in your previous life. I've got one under my chin, I don't really know what that means. So there was a young boy in India who was adamant that in a previous life he was called Maharam and he was shot close range in the chest several times. Now Dr. Stevenson was able to find the autopsy report for Maharam. Now his bullet wounds exactly match the boy's birthmarks. Another of the cases that Dr. Stevenson came across was from a 12 year old boy in the Middle East. Now he was born with a really strange ring like mark around his neck. Now he says he remembers his previous life and that his two uncles actually beheaded him in order to get his inheritance. Jesus. We actually did a whole two part series on reincarnation. Danny did part one, I did part two. They're super interesting, so if you want to know more about it, then do watch those videos after this one. Was it number three? So this is a scary, scary sight, and it appeared over a mall in the city of Kitwe in Zambia. The cloud formation, to me, looks like a Dementor swooping down to suck out my soul, and I'm saying, do you know what? JK Rowling called it. I think I'd crack out my Patronus and hope for the best. It's a dapple grey mare, by the way. The scary image in the clouds was around 100 meters long and looked over a shopping center in the city for 30 whole minutes. Now eyewitnesses said that some people even started worshipping the cloud formation because they thought it was a manifestation of God. Others, like I perhaps would, ran away. 
Was it an angel? Was it a ghoul? Was it a ghost? Was it a higher message from some strange being? Okay, we've got more sky related drama bending the mind and at number two we have the man at Yellowstone. Have you ever seen a person and met their eye and felt something strange? What would you then do if you saw them again somewhere completely different? Now the man at Yellowstone story really did freak me out when I read it. This is what reddit poster parrot tamer had to say. At 12 years of age my mum used to let me stay in the truck as she went grocery shopping. As I waited I see an old guy walking towards me with an indescribable look as if I know too much. He stopped around 5 feet away from the truck and looked me directly in the eye for a couple of seconds and then headed back the exact way he came. It was a rather traumatic experience and very confusing for the age 5 to 6. Some years later my dad was showing me home videos of us at Yellowstone National Park. Now at Old Faithful I noticed the same guy, the same look, the same clothes peering at us on camera and at me through the TV. I'm freaked out even telling this. Whoa, now everyone who read it was freaked out too because this story received 1.5 thousand upvotes and honestly I feel like this could be made into a movie. Finally, a different direction and an absolute mind bender of a theory at number one. This always makes me question my reality for like days. We have the great filter theory. We know by now that we aren't alone in the universe as in there are other planets beyond ours and other solar systems beyond ours and even other galaxies. So with that in mind a few people are wondering like where is everyone? To cut a long astrological story short the great filter theory suggests that planets must pass a filter before they're able to communicate with other aliens. The filter being does a planet go extinct due to natural or unnatural disaster before we're capable of actually reaching near light speeds or finding a way to make contact with other planets? Will we pass the filter or will we die before we get there? The fact that we haven't had any definitive contact with any other intergalactic civilization as of yet suggests that there is a higher probability of self destruction. Were there aliens out there? But did they kill themselves by war or plague or pestilence? Cheery! Coming in at number 10 we have General Tao and the glitch in the matrix. I love food so this story really stuck with me. Getting the wrong order sucks and I'm usually way too disappointed by that kind of thing it really ruins my day. But this story is beyond disappointment. Something utterly bizarre happened to two friends who decided to eat at an Asian food restaurant. The story shared on thought catalog reads, me and my friend were at a Chinese restaurant and we ordered General Chow chicken. We also ordered a a shrimp lo mein dish. When we sat down we took out both boxes and set them on the table about 2 feet apart. My friend opened the first box and we saw a shrimp lo mein. Has all the things in there, noodles, shrimp, fried rice. He closed the box and opened the other box. Now inside that box was another shrimp lo mein dish. Shrimp, noodles, fried rice. Oh, I think they must have mixed up the order. Or I was just about to say this but my friend said out loud, oh. Looks like they made a mistake and gave us two. As he opened up the first box again, now inside the boxes this time were two General Tao chickens. Ge General Tao chicken, white rice, and an egg roll. He froze and looked at me. I looked back at him. We sat in silence. It took us five or so minutes to collect ourselves. I have no idea what happened. While this story doesn't include ghouls or devils, something so simple as something in front of you changing before your very eyes, I mean, that actually really does spook me to my core. Was it shrimp? Was it chicken? What was going on? Coming in at number 9, we have French. Bonjour et bienvenue dans la top 10 plus incroyable. Je suis votre présentatrice, Rebecca Felgate. Tu parles français? Non? Oui? I'm just messing with you and probably not very well if you're French, I apologize. But what would you do if someone around you inexplicably started speaking fluent French or any other language? And what's more, you joined in, even though you don't speak that language. Weird, right? What a mind melt. There have been strange incidences of people dreaming in languages that they do not usually speak or understand, but they have perfect clarity. Now, stranger still, some people have even reported this happening in real waking life. I found two stories on Reddit. Witty Repost wrote Several years ago, I woke up in bed next to my now ex girlfriend and we had a conversation in fluent French. I got up and got in the shower, and as the water started running, I realized that neither of us spoke. French. 
When I got out, I asked her about it, and she remembered it happening too, but she was as confused as I was. I can't even remember what it was that we talked about because I don't speak French. Brains are weird. Now, someone replied to that comment with their own similar experience. Now, this is really, really weird to read. They said, I have a similar story. I was in Paris on Christmas Eve doing a Contiki tour, and I was in a nightclub, absolutely blackout drunk, and jumped into a taxi with one of the girls from the tour. She came up to me in the morning telling me that she was very impressed with my French. She said that she was so impressed that I spoke French so fluently. After I told her that I don't know how to speak French, she told me that I'd had a 30 minute conversation in fluent French with her and the taxi driver. It blew me away, but she was so adamant that it had happened. Weird. My actual dad was in a coma for three months and woke up with an American accent, so I do think brains are pretty strange. At number eight, we have the little girl with asthma. From previous stories I've told you, you may have picked up on the fact that my family a little bit mystical. They kind of believe in a lot of that stuff. My mum and stepdad definitely believe in the otherworldly, as does my nana. My dad, on the other hand, thinks it's total nonsense, so make of that what you will. So when I was young, we had a really, really horrible car accident, and afterwards, my mum started going to a psychic. One day she went, and it seemed that she got a message from her uncle, my nana's brother Leonard, who died when I was very young. Now, Uncle Leonard loved his garden. He was always out there planting or digging things up. One day he came through to my mum as a psychic saw a man in his garden wearing a flat cap, just like he always did. He looked sad though, rather than being his usual jovial self. When the psychic spoke to him, he said that he was worried today. He was worried about a little girl with asthma. Now, I had really bad asthma as a young child, so bad that I had to go to hospital a few times and stay overnight. When Uncle Leonard was alive, he really liked me, and he knew that I had asthma. He even came to see me after I'd been in hospital and would give me sweets, which my mum didn't love. At the time that he said that he was really worried about me, I honestly wasn't doing very well. Not because of the asthma, but because my family was having a bit of a horrible time, and despite always getting good grades in school, I was struggling and going home at lunchtime and drinking with my friends, and I was only 12, so things were pretty bad, and my mum never really noticed, because things were bad for her too. After Uncle Leonard's warning, she focused her attention on me and was able to see for herself that I needed some help. Was this really a well-timed message from her dead uncle? If so, what kind of reality are we living in? Okay, so out of the ether and into the kitchen up next. And coming in at number seven, we have the cat is dead and the cat is alive. So a little thought experiment for you right here. This one will mess with your understanding of reality. Hurrah. This story or theory or whatever you want to call it is known as Schrodinger's cat and it was dreamt up by an Austrian physicist called Erwin Schrodinger. So a cat is in a black box filled with a flask of poison. The box is sealed. You would not know if the cat was dead or alive until you opened up the box again. So until the box is opened, the cat is, in theory, both alive and dead. The only two possible outcomes. This theory is applied to the way electrons behave. Electrons are little subatomic particles found in atoms that we can see spinning both forward and backwards, but not at the same time. They basically choose an outcome. Some think that the act of observation makes a universe diverge, and both universes, both outcomes, one with an alive cat and one with a dead, come into existence. You with me? Every decision or situation that could create a different outcome creates a divergence in the current universe. Or so the theory goes. Again, if you get me. Basically, we're all living in a multiverse and we pick our own reality based on the decisions we make. Moving on to number six now, we have true or false. This one comes from Reddit user the ambush bug. I'm going to jump right into it and we'll discuss it after. They said, in fourth or fifth grade, we stopped all of our classes for the day. Two people came into our classroom, a man and a woman, and they didn't say why they were there or where they had come from. They handed out questionnaire booklets that seemed like standardized tests, except for the questions within them. 50 or so questions, all of them true or false format, but with really, really weird content. Some that I can remember were true or false, worms talk to trucks, and true or false, apples are blue. We all answered them while looking really confused, and our teachers were silent the entire time. The next day, nobody said a word about the test. I remember asking people what they were, but nobody could recall where the people were from. We never saw them again, and no faculty of the school ever once mentioned a test. We didn't have them the next year, and had never had them before. I still have no clue what they wanted from 
from us. All right, what is going on there, guys? That sounds like something out of a movie, like some sort of creepy CIA stuff. Coming into number five, we have the Men in Black sightings. I love the 1997 Men in Black movie. I absolutely cannot believe that it's over 20 years old. I love the Will Smith Tommy Lee Jones double act, but an act is exactly what I thought it was. There can't really be an organization with secret knowledge of aliens, right? Well, it seems that actually, there have been countless sightings of men in black suits behaving slightly outside the norm, then never to be seen again. In 1955, Dr. Albert K. Bender was visited by strange men in suits who warned him to cease and desist with his research into UFOs. Who were they? Other people working in alien research have reported being harassed by strange, journalists in black. But a sighting I really want to talk about with the men in black came after the Mothman incident. Now, Several locals from the Point Pleasant area claimed to have seen groups of two or three men wearing black suits. Some reports would even say that the men would show up to the houses of Mothman witnesses They would claim to be from gas or water companies coming to read the meter. The men typically would go to the basement, but after a while the homeowner would report checking on them only to find that they'd vanished. Was the Mothman an alien, and were the Men in Black somehow linked? Okay, it's all getting very Cloud Atlas here at number. Aliens at number four, we have the Alien Hijack. It's 1977. You're watching television, but then this happens. Execution of all captured prisoners of war. Allowing you to start negotiations. In Australia, Mr. Kerry Packer's cricketers are still. Like, what is going on? You bang the box a bit. You're like, what's this signal? What's going on? People used to bang on boxes in those days because TV was analog and not digital, and sometimes signals would just get interrupted. After a while of banging, this happens. This is the voice of Allah, representative of the Ashtar Galactic Kamala, speaking to you. Um, hi there, Virilian. So, Virilian is said to be an alien from the Ashtar Galactic Command, and he hijacked a southern television broadcast via the Hannington transmitter of the Independent Broadcast Authority in the UK at 5 pm on November the 26th. Now, the time zone of the alien is unknown. I am kind of assuming Virilian's gender here, so please excuse me, but I'm going with he. He said, All of your weapons of evil must be removed, and you have but a short time to learn to live together in peace. Or or you must leave the galaxy. This is our message to our dear friends. We've watched you growing for many years, as you two have watched our lights in your skies. You know now that we are here, and that there are more beings on and around your Earth than your scientists admit. We're deeply concerned about you and your path towards the light, and we'll do all we can to help you. Now, the broadcast interruption is generally considered to be a hoax, but we still don't actually know where it came from. If I was watching Southern TV on that wintry night, I would truly really have begun to question my reality outside of my world. Maybe scientists and the government do know more than they're letting on. Does JK Rowling know more than she's letting on? We have Dementor into number three. We have the man from Tored. This is a very scary story that comes from 1954 when a smart looking man was detained at the Japanese border. Now, he had just arrived on a plane from Europe to Hadena Airport. The man said that he was on his third business trip to Japan that year and he had a wallet filled with a mixture of currencies, seeming to verify his business traveler status. However, when he presented his passports, officials were absolutely absolutely baffled. Asking where he was from, the man spoke in French and he said he was from Torod. He showed his passport again and stamps that supported his travels. The only thing is that no one had ever heard of Torod. Torod is not a place, they don't have passports, it doesn't exist. Beyond that, he was carrying a checkbook to a non-existent bank. The company he was travelling to visit said that they'd actually never heard of him, despite him insisting that he did business with them. When he was asked to point out to Rod on the map, he pointed to where Andorra is today, and he seemed confused and offended to be told that his country was not a real country. Now He was detained in a hotel overnight whilst Japanese authorities decided what to do with him. He didn't seem threatening, but he obviously wasn't who he said he was. When they came to collect him in the morning, he disappeared. Did he accidentally fly through a portal into our universe, and how did he manage to get back? Honestly, this one is super baffling. I definitely recommend doing some of your own reading around it, because the story is crazy. Coming in, bringing it back down to earth with a story that gave me chills, we have The Curse of Timmer's Tomb. Curse stories really do make me question reality, and I could have gone with a classic King Tutankhamun tomb story, but I thought I would tell you a lesser known one, which is still horrifying, and well, you'll see. So Timmer, or Tam 
Tamerlane founded the Timurid Empire in the 14th century. Now this stretched across Central Asia and Persia. Timur was a warlord and military tactician who killed some 17 million people, so you didn't want to mess with him. The tactical tyrant was buried in modern day Uzbekistan. Now, years and years and hundreds of years later in 1941, his burial chamber was infiltrated by Soviet Union soldiers who found that they had unsettled an ancient curse. On the walls of the chamber was a very scary warning indeed. It read something along the lines of, When I rise from the dead, the world shall tremble. Whomsoever opens my tomb shall unleash an invader more terrible than I. If killing 17 million people wasn't terrible, I'm honestly not sure what was. Now, the Middle East and parts of India were totally ransacked by him, with their populations massacred at his charge. So, did they heed this warning? No, they did not. The Soviets dug him up anyway, and what happened? Hitler happened. Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa, the largest military operation of all time, and the deadly turning point of World War II shortly after the infiltration of the tomb. When the Soviet leader Stalin found out about it, he had Tamerlane slash Timur reburied with full Islamic rites. Now, days later, the Soviets did win in the Battle of Stalingrad and did go on to defeat Hitler, but he did continue to plague the world for another three years, so thanks, Soviets. Thanks. And finally, at number one now, we have Ernie. Do any of you guys have those toys that talk when you like press a button on them or move in front of them? Did you ever think they could be creepy? Well, you're about to after this story from Reddit user LXNXB. They said, When I was a kid, I had lots and lots of plushies. One of them was a talking Ernie doll from Sesame Street that wasn't functioning properly. You had to absolutely bang it on a table for it to say, I feel great. Our old house in my home country was housed with spirit but not bad ones, or at least that's what my parents said. I never witnessed or felt anything until this one time. When I was eight, I overheard my parents saying something along the lines that my Ernie plushie spoke every time they talked about my grandma. I got irrationally scared, which made my parents hide Ernie in a huge box along with my other unused plushies. One time, when I was playing hide and seek, I was hiding with my childhood friend Jay in our spare room where the box of plushies were. While we were hiding, I figured I might as well tell him the story about the haunted Ernie doll and my just recently passed away grandma. In the middle of the story, we hear Ernie say, I feel great, in the box on top of the shelf. There's no way that that was moved. And even if it was somehow moved by gravity, you need to bang Ernie on the table to even make it talk. We screamed and ran outside. All right, coming in at number 10, we have Say My Name. Have you ever thought that you've heard someone saying your name around you, but you look around and there's nobody there? If so, you aren't alone. Six years ago, a Redditor posted, occasionally when I'm alone in the house, I swear I've heard my dad shout my name or something. But when I go to investigate, there's no one there. I'm not sure if I'm being punked or what, but it's just kind of weird. And then, just 26 hours ago, Lona740 posted on the Glitch in the Matrix subreddit saying, I'm not sure if anyone else experiences these kinds of things, but it's a pretty normal occurrence for me. The area around me doesn't matter, although it usually happens when I'm zoned out in a crowd. But I can hear someone say my name in a very calm voice. The voice is always familiar, but oddly different each time and I can't remember exactly how it's said or what I was thinking before. It's really odd but I've grown into it and just look around to see if anyone's actually calling my name. I've honestly definitely had this experience too. It doesn't happen to me loads, but I can absolutely remember being in my old high school gym and swearing blind that when I moved the mats they said Bex to me like that, just like that. It was really, really freaky. I did not like it. Why are you saying my name, Mats? Coming in at number 9, we have Time Stood Still. Redditor Krolazool posted about a time that they managed to make a snack whilst time stood still around them. A year ago, they wrote, When I was a teenager, I was in my room and decided to go to the kitchen to make a sandwich. I looked at the clock before I left, 6.48pm. Excellent snack time. I went to the kitchen, I made an awesome sandwich, I got some chips and a drink. This probably took me at least 10 minutes. When I walked back into my room, the clock still said 6.48. I stood there for a bit really confused, and then it turned to 6.49. Spooky. Now a lot of people in the comments were sharing similar stories, and I want to know if this has ever happened to you, but more importantly, I want to know what's in the sandwich. I love sandwich chat, I really do. Hopefully there was some good cheese. You guys seem to really, really like it in previous videos. 
videos when I shared personal stories with you, so I thought I would give you another one. Coming in at number eight, we have the bloop. In 1997, the loudest underwater sound ever recorded was heard and is now referred to as the bloop, which I kind of like. Bloop. Do you guys want to hear it? Of course you do. Okay, so it may not sound like much to you now, but this sound was heard on multiple sensors 3,000 miles away, which is pretty crazy. There is no confirmed scientific explanation for the sound either. The best theory we have is the sound of an ice quake, but bloop, we just don't know. Bloop, honestly, I could do this all day. Bloop, bloop, bloop. I don't know about questioning reality, but I am questioning my sanity now. Next up, number seven now, we have the creature. Do you guys believe in Bigfoot? We've talked about that a lot in urban legend videos. Is this story related to that? Reddit user The Glitter Band said, I get insomnia. It was one of those nights and I was sitting out on my back porch at about 4 a.m. smoking a cigarette. It was one of these eerie nights where there is absolutely no breeze and it's just completely quiet out. We have woods behind our house and as I was sitting there, I see this person making his way through the canopy of the trees, like jumping from tree to tree, 30 or 40 feet up in the air. I was absolutely stunned and just sat there, dumbly too afraid and confused to even get up and run inside the house. This person or thing or whatever it was stopped directly behind my house and looked at me. At this point, it's about 50 feet away and maybe 40 feet up in the air. It pauses for about five seconds, staring in my direction. I'm absolutely certain that it wasn't an animal. Its body was human shaped and it definitely wasn't a raccoon, bear or any of the other things people might have suggested it was. But the way it was moving through the trees definitely was not human. No human, I don't care how fit they are, could move like that. It was too dark to make out that much detail of the face, clothing, or anything like that. After about five seconds of looking at me, it turns away and takes off the same way it had been going before, just leaping from tree to tree at a fast pace. Within a few more seconds, it was out of sight. Fact number six, the Mothman sightings. Now the Mothman is quite the tale and is now firmly ingrained in West Virginian lore. The so-called Mothman was spotted on numerous occasions at the Point Pleasant area between November the 12th, 1966 and December 15th, 1966. Now each sighting was strikingly similar. Each time a large flying man like figure around 10 feet tall with wings and glowing red eyes would swoop at people. There were over a dozen reported sightings and one even came from two firemen, which I would call a credible source. Other reports came in of a giant bird with a large wingspan and red eyes. Now the last sighting of the Mothman came on the day of the Silver Bridge Collapse, connecting Point Pleasant in West Virginia to Gallopolis in Ohio. There are even purported images of the Mothman on the bridge. Now, over 40 people died that day. Was it as a result of the Mothman? Also giving me shivers at number five, we have the wow signal. The wow signal is not necessarily one of those things that makes me question my reality outright, but makes me question life beyond my reality. Day to day, I think about my job and my friends and my aspirations, what I'm eating, whether or not I get enough exercise. Now, while I do think about life beyond our own planet more so than the average person, I don't really tend to think about what it would be like if aliens did contact us. Like, really, I don't know know what that would be like because actually that really would change things. So with that in mind, think about this. The wow signal was recorded in 1977 by the Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope. Now it was a strange and unexpected signal that lasted for 72 whole seconds and it was so impressive and interesting that the astronomer listening to the radio signals, Jerry R. Emmon, wrote wow in the notes beside the data, which is how it got its name. Now according to most astronomers, the wow signal is one of the strongest candidates for being an actual message sent to us by aliens. Have a listen to 10 seconds of it and tell me what you think. Okay, so it just kind of sounds like weird sounds to us, but we don't know what that means. We don't know what we're listening to. Perhaps it is aliens saying something to us. Speaking of up next at number four for you, we have the answer phone. Imagine hearing your own voice on an answer phone message. But the you that recorded was a you from an alternate reality. This seemed to be what happened to Redditor Kill All Extremists, and blimey, what a username. They wrote, I called my friend up and he wasn't home, so I left a message on his answering machine. I said, Hey, it's me. Sorry I miss you. Call you later. Bye. That was it. I hung up and left the house. I made no other calls. Later that day, he called me back and said, Wow, that was quite a message you left. Who was that girl you were talking to? I was like, what are you talking about? I wasn't talking to any girl. Well, as it turns out, the message I left 
didn't end after I said bye. I even had to go over to his house and listen to the message a few times to even believe him. After my initial message that I did record, there was a slight pause and it continues for another 30 or 40 seconds with me talking to some girl. It's like I forgot to put my phone down, it was my voice, but it was a conversation I never had with a girl whose voice I didn't recognise. It was definitely my voice. Also, I made references to my occupation and activities that were the same. Basically, in this conversation I was talking to this girl about going skiing but I had to go down to my shop and work on a car first which totally correlated to me. Then the message just stopped. It was very freaky, I can't explain it. They then added TLDR, I may have connected to an alternate universe through a telephone answering machine. Honestly, I think maybe you did. I'm calling alternate reality on this, like alternate reality for definite. Ooh, I feel like you guys are gonna love this. It's the most amazing top 10 favorite, but we haven't talked about it in a while. Coming in, coming in at number three, we have The Bar. A Redditor had an interesting story to share about the previous occupants of their home. The post has so far had nearing 900 upvotes and reads, When I was 12 or so and still living at my parents' house, I would wake up in the middle of the night to pee. Once, I got to the bathroom and I heard what sounded like a party going on downstairs. There was laughter, there was music, the sound of glasses being knocked together for a toast, the whole shebang. I thought it was weird that my parents had friends over so late at night and hadn't told me that I hadn't seen them before I went to bed, but I decided to go and see who was there. I opened the door to the kitchen and the entire downstairs was completely dark and silent, not even a television on. I was thoroughly confused by the strangeness of the situation and it didn't really register so I never told anyone. Years and years later I mentioned this to my dad and he said that he'd heard them too. It turns out there used to be a small public bar in their home which was over 150 years old. I guess some of the patrons decided to hang out for all of eternity. Again. Is this stone tape theory? Stone drunk theory? The bar goers got so drunk that the energy was absorbed in the walls forever, and I guess I can kind of get on board with that. Next up on number two now, we have John. This one is just straight up creepy. If they are telling the truth about the details of this story, then I have no idea what the explanation is. Reddit user CatGib13 said, When my son was about two or three, he wouldn't go to sleep, so I let him in my bed. My husband was asleep, so I told my boy he had to look at his books quietly when I read mine. He was good for a bit, but then he started started reading the book, actually reading the words out loud, slowly. Now he couldn't read, and it was never a book we had read to him yet, it wasn't memorization. I asked him how he knew what it said, and he replied, my friend John is telling me. He talked to John whenever he played. He divided his matchbox cars into two piles and talked to his friend. He also claimed he lived in his nursery closet. At age four, we moved him into his big boy room, and now that he's 16, he refuses to even step into the nursery. He hasn't been in there since we moved him out. When I asked why, he says he doesn't know, but it gives him the creeps, and the hairs on his arm stand up even thinking about it. That doesn't bother anyone else. I don't actually know what the explanation for that story is. Maybe the kid could read better than they thought, or maybe the spirit of a dead man called John was reading out loud to him at night. I hope it's the first one. At number one, this is a story from my family to you guys. So finally coming into number one, we have The Stranger at the Beach. So like I said, this story comes from my stepdad Andrew. He was born and raised along the Suffolk coast in England, and one day he was a child and his family decided to take a trip from Southwold, where they lived, to Felixstowe. This is another coastal town around an hour away on the A12 road. Now the family went there quite often, they enjoyed it. The family were on the beach and they were playing, but they were planning to go for some food before getting back on the road. An old woman, mysterious kind of looking woman wearing a headscarf around her hair, hobbled up to the family and had a quiet word with Andrew's mother. She looked her in the eyes and said in a small but determined voice, I should get on the road now if I were you. Now she looked past the mother at the children playing on the beach and then back again. Something passed between the two women. The mother was confused, but there was something in the older woman's eye that made her take her words very seriously. She said nothing, and the woman walked away, seemingly not approaching anyone else on the beach. Andrew's mother piled all of her kids back into the car, ditching the plan to eat before leaving. They had a clear and safe drive back home and got home in good time. It was only the next day that Andrew's mother read in the newspaper about a serious car pile up on the A12 that had killed dozens of people, including children children. Descriptions described it as being like a war zone. Whoever that woman on the beach was, she stopped them getting caught in the accident and may very well have saved their lives. Mwah, spooky weird feelings, ah! Okay, coming in at number 10, we have the Phoenix Lights. 
We have just passed the 22 year anniversary of one of the strangest shared phenomena in American history. In March 1997, between 7:30 p.m. and 10:30 p.m., thousands of people saw bright lights flying over Nevada, Arizona, and North Mexico. Many of the lights appeared in formation. One of the very popular reported sightings was a V-shaped object with multiple lights flying through the sky. One witness from Prescott, Arizona, known only as JR, said, "It was totally silent. I've never seen anything even close to the colors from the exhaust that propelled that thing. It was as big as downtown Prescott and completely blocked out the stars." The thing is though, the phenomenon was actually spotted by so so many people, it's hard to ignore. Some of them were very very credible indeed. For example, the Arizona governor Fife Symington. There have been possible re-emergences of the Phoenix Lights too. They possibly occurred in 2007 and 2008. So, what is going on? What or who is flying by? Is it aliens? Coming in at number nine, we have Deja Vu, Deja Vu. Wait. What? So we recently did a video talking about deja vu, but hear this. On Reddit, one person responded to a thread asking what moment in your life made you question reality. Very anonymous wow said, I once had a deja vu of me having deja vu. It completely messed with my mind for like an hour. So if deja vu is a glitch in the matrix, what is deja vu, deja vu? A glitch in the matrix's matrix? Have you ever heard of deja vu, deja vu? Have you ever had it? Honestly, I feel like I've gone cross-eyed. Coming out number 8 now, we have The Room. This one comes from a Reddit user who said, I work in hospice, I spend a lot of time around dying people. About a month and a half ago, one of my longer term clients was actively passing. Now that can involve hallucinating, seeing and talking to people who aren't actually there. It happens a lot, there's nothing wrong with it, it's the dying person's brain trying to grasp with their new reality. So I work overnights. My client was wide awake, talking to people who were in the room with her, but who weren't in the room with me. Me, which was fine, I'm okay with that. Until she started describing people I knew who had passed, I almost quit my job that night and told myself I wouldn't return to her. Most of the rest of her hospice care team started quitting in the next few days, and I ended up staying with her until the very end. That one weird night was the only time she was talking to my dead family members. I'm still kind of messed up over it. Coming in at number seven, we have the coma. For some reason, this story actually really stuck with me. I mentioned it recently in a video I did about parallel universe theories, and I'm still thinking about it now. The story comes from a post seven years ago on Reddit by Tempt to Sassoon, and it actually really stirred something in me. So basically, the writer wrote that they were involved in an accident. They were beaten up and knocked down to the pavement, and they were unconscious for a period of time. They said that they were only unconscious for several minutes, but during those few minutes, they lived 10 years of a different life. The guy said he met a woman that he loved, they had two children, and they were happy. But one day, strangely, he noticed that something was wrong with the lamp in his living room. It was melting and contorting in some way. He said it was after three days and after some conversations with his worried wife that he came to the realization that actually, the lamp wasn't real. Now he said it started to invert and distort in his vision and his perspective, and then he said he was filled with pain, super pain. The lamp was moving and twisting and disappearing, and then all of a sudden, he awoke from his period of unconsciousness. He realized that the 10 years that he spent with his wife and children weren't real. He'd been on the pavements for minutes. He dreamed it all up somehow, but he spent the next three years in a state of severe depression, grieving the loss of a wife and children that weren't real to him, but he realized that never existed. He thought he was going insane. He said, I've had many people personal message me describing similar experiences. Some people have said that these experiences are impossible, but I'd say, actually, do you know what? We don't know everything about the human brain. Honestly, to me, this story makes me question a lot of things, and there are a lot of weird coma stories out there that make me think, maybe I don't really know what's going on. Okay, next up, this is a story that comes from my mum, or more specifically from my mum's friend. I never got to meet her because she died before I was born. This is her story. Coming in at number six, we have the wrong flight. Recently, I read a story that reminded me of another story that I read that very much made me suspect that there was some kind of glitch in the matrix. Are you following that? Let me explain. So on the week that I filmed this video, a plane flying to Dusseldorf in Germany accidentally landed in Edinburgh. How does this happen? Now the plane took off from London City Airport and instead of flying east to Germany, it flew north to Scotland, 800 kilometers away. Now the passengers only realized after they touched down. The pilot, it seemed, wasn't actually lost. He was given the wrong flight plan, not for another plane, for his plane. 
It was just the wrong destination somehow though. Now nobody understood how the error was made, perhaps it was the work of a time wormhole like what allegedly happened in 2009. What happened? Well a plane ended up thousands of miles off course in Santa Cruz, Spain when it had been flying over Santa Cruz in Bolivia, South America. Now it seems that many people were concerned that CERN's particle smashing large hadron collider had somehow opened up and created a time warp. But, like, I don't know about this one. It's the Daily Express, so can we trust this headline? Less of a scary story, more of a scary fact to make you question reality. And can people simply just disappear? That's my question at number five. We have the missing colony. So, what happened to the Roanoke colony is to this day, 434 years later, an absolute mystery. In 1585, a small group of settlers made Roanoke Island off the coast of North Carolina their home. Some wrote that they found the conditions unsatisfactory, and some even left. Despite that, though, in 1587, 115 English settlers came to join those who were already out there. But weirdly, they found no one. They didn't seem too disturbed by this, they figured they just complained about the conditions and moved on elsewhere. Although I would have stopped to question. The only thing is though, the group of people were never heard from again. The second round of Roanokers decided to send their governor, John White, back to England to gather fresh supplies and fresh settlers to expand the colony. When he returned back to the colony again, where his wife and daughter were I may add, he found again absolutely no traces of the inhabitants. The only clue he found this time was the word Croatone carved into a wooden post. Honestly, this is super super strange. Where did the settlers of the Roanoke go? They too were never seen again. Now some theories say that both were killed by a Native American tribe, although the fact that there was no trace of their bodies ever is actually pretty suspicious. There wasn't so much as an errant bone. Some people again think they decided to sail back to England for some reason and they got lost at sea, although why they wouldn't leave a message letting people know that they were returning? I don't know. And also, what is Croatonan or Croatan? What's that about? It's really deeply unsettling that this happened twice, and this is a real world mystery. But of course, it isn't the only story out there of people disappearing without a trace. MH370, anyone? Next up at number four now, we have the boats. This one comes from Reddit user Risa, and if you can solve this mystery, guys, there's a massive monetary reward for you at the end of it. I'm serious, you're about to see why. They said, My uncle never had a chance to meet him, hired a small yacht with a small group of friends and were going to use it to do sailing holidays as a business. Anyway, they radioed in very early one morning saying they were out of petrol off the coast and were told they would receive petrol in the morning. They went to deliver petrol and never found the boat. They have only ever found one life donut ring and that's it. They think the boat was pirated and we have reports that they're still alive in different countries but they've never been substantiated. They also have a sneaking suspicion that the yacht owner had something to do with it as he acted so dodgy after it all went down. They literally have absolutely no idea what happened. There were no other ships in the area at the time. They thought they could have been run over and sank by a larger ship. Anyway, it's called the Patanela. There is still a huge reward out for any info. Coming into number three, we have the call. Have you ever received a call from beyond the grave? Can you even imagine that happening? Now, this story comes from Redditor Leafy Green. Mountain, and it got 1.2 thousand upvotes. The story they tell is really sad, but with a kind of spooky light at the end of the tunnel, depending on how you see it. They wrote, I was a total idealist back in high school, so when choosing a college, I chose to go somewhere that none of my friends were attending so that I could strike out on my own in a finding myself sort of way. Well, I ended up making a few really close friends in my first semester. I mean, these guys became like family to me in a matter of months. One day during winter break, one of the guys, my buddy Kim, had gone back home to visit friends and family, and on his return trip to our college, he actually hit a bad patch of ice and got into a car accident and was sadly killed. They said it hurt so much for such a long time. They said, I still think about him all of the time. But anyway, a few weeks after Kimbo's accident, me and the rest of the guys were getting back from a party off campus, and as we were standing outside our dorm room building smoking a cigarette, I felt my 
phone vibrating. I pulled it out and I saw that I was getting a call from Kimbo's phone. Dumbfounded, I showed my friends and answered the phone really quickly. When I picked it up, it went directly to his voicemail which played the same message it always had. It never happened again and we never really talked about it, but for me it was one of those someone's looking after me moments. I hadn't been doing very well after his death, but seeing his name show up on my cell phone screen one final time made me feel a whole lot better for a time and really helped me get out of the slump that I was in. I have no idea how his phone could have possibly called me and I doubt I ever will. It was one of those glitch in the matrix moments that I'll forever be thankful for. Rest in peace Kim, but feel free to call again. That like really 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 almost had me tearing up when I was reading it before putting it in the video like how sweet and sad I often think about what happens to people's phones after they die and like I don't know what happens I guess the numbers are recycled but what was going on in this story was Kimbo calling him from beyond the grave just to let him know that he'd always be his buddy <sighs> Number two, we have the city in the sky. Is it a parallel universe? On October 2015, in two separate cities in China, a strange mirage appeared in the sky. It very much looked like a city. The first incident occurred in Foshan in the Guangdong province, and the second was in Shaanxi. Both strange occurrences were caught on camera and bore striking resemblances to one another. Now, from the pictures taken, it clearly to me looks like a modern day city has just popped up and appeared in the sky, and I wouldn't know what to do if I saw that. So, what is going on? Is there a scientist? explanation for it. Well actually, there is. It could be an optical illusion called Fata Morgana. This is where distant objects are distorted and inverted via a process of light refraction through smog or heat haze. Others say that it's actually a clear sign of a parallel universe overlapping with ours. Once again I have to say seeing this would make me question my reality. Ok, this always sticks with me, it's something I've seen a lot here on Most Amazing Top 10 and I've put in a lot of videos, but it is always relevant and always really 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 crazy. We have the disappearance at number 1, Elon, what are you doing here? We have Elon Musk and the Matrix. So how would you feel if I told you that you're living in a simulated reality? You'd say, Rebecca, what the Keanu are you chatting about? But honestly, hear me out. It seems that Elon Musk and other high profile science loving billionaires think that we are actually living in a simulating reality and they're paying big bucks to try and break us out. It seems that the tech mogul thinks that there is just a billion to one chance that we aren't in a simulated reality. It seems that this could be linked to a strange rock face in Peru, Amaru Maru, which locals first nations believe is a doorway to immortal life. They often see people appearing and disappearing there. Is this the entrance to the the matrix or is the matrix just in our mind? Coming in at number 10 we have the stare. Have you ever felt like somebody was looking at you for no reason? What if more than one person was staring at you at one time? That would be super freaky right? Right. We'll have a listen to this story posted on Reddit by JWHS. They said, I was eating at a Chinese restaurant with my sister. Everyone in the restaurant was Asian except for our table. We ordered our food and I kid you not the following happened. The waiter left our table and then the entire restaurant of about 45 people went dead silent and everyone, I mean everyone turned to look at me and just stared. I had a rushing feeling that I was in a dream. I thought that I was imagining it but it just continued. I looked at my sister in front of me and all that came out of my mouth was, what's happening? Are you seeing this? A few seconds after I uttered those words, conversations sprang up as quickly as they dissipated and everyone can just continue with their meal and their evening. The entire event lasted for about 7-10 to 10 seconds, but I felt like I just experienced a glitch in reality. After talking about the event more with the commenters, they added further detail. They said that the staring was all in unison and that absolutely everything went so silent that they could even hear the television in the room. They said it was literally like everyone had planned to do it before he walked into the restaurant, like it was some kind of weird flash mob prank thing. They also said that it wasn't just staring, people literally turned their bodies towards him and stared, which really is freaky. I need to move on, the thought of it is just giving me chills. Moving on to number 9 now, we have the figure. When you're a kid and you get creeped out at night, your parents may tell you it's just your imagination, but what if you found found out that you were right the whole time. Reddit user Miss Awesomeness said, When I was a kid between 8 or 9, I used to wake up every night to headlights coming through my bedroom window. The lights would then stop and turn off, not as if a car drove by, but as if they were turned off. Then the long shadows of a man, as if he were looking through my window, would pass by and stop right in front of the window. I would lay really still and pretend nothing happened, every night for months. Eventually I convinced myself it was my imagination. Now that I think 
looking back it stopped when my stepdad moved in but I was convinced it wasn't real. Across the street lived my best friend whose mom was also single and she refused to sleep in her bedroom. Her window faced my window. She told me years later it was because every night a man would park on her side yard and walk over to my yard. The long shadows were from the light in her yard. She eventually decided it was my dad checking in on us and never told me until I was a teenager. It wasn't my dad, I know that because I asked him, so I thought I was crazy and hallucinating for years or perhaps I wasn't and two kids were having odd dreams at the same time every night. Coming in at number 8 we have the death cat. There is a cat named Oscar who lives in a nursing home in Rhode Island. Look at him, isn't he beautiful? It seems that since 2005 Oscar, now an elderly cat, has been accurately predicting deaths. It seems that he has predicted the deaths of 50 patients by curling up next to them in the days before their death, even when they seem totally healthy. Nurses now know to call family members when he sleeps next to patients because of his track record, it's just so accurate. So what does Oscar know that we don't? Is there a scientific explanation? Currently he is being studied to see if there are any clues as to how he knows that people are going to die. Coming into number 7 we have Disneyland, the place of dreams or a really really creepy place you decide. I'm not exactly sure what I think to fate or whether or not there's someone I'm destined to be with or not or if we're living our lives as a result of a string of decisions. Perhaps it would be a good discussion point in the comments section down below, tell me if you believe in fate. Again, I just don't know. This story did give me a really 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 weird feeling though. So basically an image of a family at Disneyland went viral, I'll show you it right now. So it's a group of kids with Shmee, good old Shmee, what a pirate. There also is a kid in a stroller behind Shmee's left shoulder in the background, well that kid is Alex. Alex used to live in Montreal in Canada, now the girl standing with Shmee is Donna, Donna lived in Florida at the time. Alex and Donna actually met but they didn't meet on that day and they wouldn't meet for 25 years, they're married now. They met in Long Island in New York. They now have three kids and regularly take them on trips to Disney World together. They realise that actually they're in one another's photos which is absolutely insane. Alex said, we've taken pictures of our kids at Disneyland, they're looking for their future wives in the background. Wow, honestly I can't imagine, that's such a crazy story, they were living in different countries. Ok so we're taught that vampires, ghosts and ghouls are the stuff of fiction, but what happens when several people, perhaps even several hundred people start seeing the same impossible thing? Is that time that we question our reality? Think about that as I talk coming into number 6, we have the yellow car. When my mum was 18, her and a couple of her girlfriends decided to have their fortune told for a laugh. They thought it would be a fun and mystical thing that they could do and just like, you know, have a little giggle about later. Anyway, they all went in one by one. My mum was told that she would have two children and one of them would stay close to home and the other would travel the world. Her friend Sue was told that she would marry a man from Spain. But Kathy, well, Kathy didn't get the good news that she was hoping to hear. Kathy, really sadly, was told that she would die in a yellow car. Now I'm told that most seers wouldn't be so specific in this day and age because can you even imagine being on the receiving end of that kind of news? My mum and Sue tried to comfort Kathy, and they said it of course was total nonsense. And she was like, you know what, maybe it is, how can someone honestly really tell you how you're going to die? Anyway, as Kathy got older, despite her kind of thinking it was a bit silly, she would never ever ever get inside a yellow car. Her encounter with the seer had actually honestly and truthfully really stuck with her. Her friends would joke and say things like well what if you buy a pre-owned car that has been sprayed but really underneath it was yellow and it would make her super paranoid. In the end Kathy did get married and her husband found the whole thing very ridiculous, he was a realist and he convinced her to face her fear by buying a yellow car. In the end though she thought enough is enough, I'll do it, I'll do what he says, this is ridiculous. Well I guess you can see where this story is going. You know what happened. She and her car were fine, until they weren't. Around two years into owning this yellow car, she slid off the road into a river. She drowned inside that yellow car, just like her fortune teller had predicted. Honestly, kind of gives me shivers. Number 5, we have we know more about the moon than the ocean. Now according to NASA, we have better maps of the surface of Mars and the moon than we do the bottom of the ocean, which is pretty mental. Don't know if you've ever seen my deep sea creatures list, but ah! Deep sea fish scare me. 
More than 80% of our ocean is unmapped, unobserved, and unexplored. Imagine what deep sea creatures are lurking down there, oh my goodness. Now, the ocean takes up 80% of the Earth, so with these stats, much of our world is still an absolute mystery to us. While we have made a few trips to the deepest section, the Mariana Trench, 11,000 meters or over 36,000 feet down, there could be all manner of things in the sea that we have no idea about. They could be lurking out of sight, and I would say imagine, but also maybe don't. Let's just all sleep soundly tonight. Another Reddit story up. Coming into number four, we have the bad feeling. Have you ever walked into a room or maybe even an area in the park and just had a really, really bad feeling? I certainly know that I have. I've actually personally had a really bad feeling about a creepy chair in my mum's house in the landing area. I just feel like it's evil. Or maybe not, but it just has a bad energy. Anyway, there's a theory out there that maybe we aren't crazy, and maybe there is bad energy stored in the walls of rooms where terrible things happened in the past, or in objects that have seen some drama. This concept is called stone tape theory, and it was thought up by a British archaeologist, Thomas Charles Lethbridge, in 1961. The real stone tape theory says that energy is absorbed by objects. As we know from the first law of thermodynamics, energy cannot be destroyed. So, the theory says that electrical and mental energy is released during traumatic events and then absorbed in rocks and walls and other items and can be replayed under certain conditions. This replay could indeed be a haunting as we know it. So, the next time you have a bad feeling, maybe you are feeling a strange energetic replay of events that have come before. Wouldn't that be like pretty? crazy. Okay, so I want you to think about that as we move on to our next point. Coming in number three now, we have pizza time. This one comes from Reddit user Math the Username, who said, I was 18 and my brother Chris was 16. I also have a brother James who was five at the time. We had just moved into an older house that used to be three apartments. We just about finished unpacking and we designated rooms. James's room was directly above the living room with a staircase. James went up to discover his new room and Chris and I took a short walk around the neighborhood. We got back and were sitting in the living room just talking. My mom says she's going to get pizza for dinner and leaves. She took a fairly long time, which is normal for her. I think she really enjoys the small break she gets when she can leave the house without James, and I never object to babysitting. Besides, James is plenty occupied with his new room. Chris and I are just talking in the living room. James is super excited about his new room. We hear him running and stomping around upstairs, opening and closing doors. Sometimes he slams the doors pretty hard, but whatever, he is a kid. I assumed he fell asleep since the noise stopped eventually. I hear my mom's car pull up. I get up to meet her in the kitchen. My mom comes in carrying soda. James follows directly behind her, carrying the food, yelling, pizza time. She took him with her to get dinner. Chris and I just looked at each other, taking way too long to comprehend what was happening and what was making that noise upstairs. Coming into number two, a different direction, we have the Bermuda Vortex. Okay, so you've all heard the stories of the Bermuda Triangle, but actually, some of them have really made me sit and think. A number of pilots have experienced a strange phenomenon in the Bermuda Triangle, and they aren't your kind of daily mail headlines. These come from genuine, credible pilots who are known for flying and be incredible. Famous pilot Charles Lindbergh had a weird experience flying over the Bermuda, but one of the most haunting accounts comes from Bruce Gernon. So this story comes from the 1970s when Gernon was flying over the Bermuda Triangle on his way to Palm Beach. This was shortly after the takeoff from Andros in the Bahamas. He came across a storm and he tried to fly around it. He then spotted a weird tunnel in the clouds and thought, you know, like whatever, cloud formations, and he decided to fly through it. In the tunnel though, he said that he had a feeling as if he was slipping through space. His heart started beating faster. He was kind of stressed out. He said he got out of the cloud tunnel after around 20 seconds, but the Miami air controllers were really, really worried because his plane had disappeared off to their radars altogether. He describes the tunnel as being filled with like an electromagnetic yellowish gray fog surrounding the plane and messing with his instruments. When he emerged from the fog at the other side of the tunnel, he thought he was over Bimini, but air traffic controllers told him that he was flying directly over Miami Beach. Now, that should have taken him around 80 minutes of flight time, but he'd been only flying for 34. He was absolutely baffled. He seemed to have traveled 100 miles in three minutes, so 1,918 miles per hour, when his plane was only capable of traveling at 200 miles per hour. Like, 
Did he fly through a time hoop? Time hoop? Loop? Wormhole? Wormholes, anyone? I don't know. I like to think that I'm, you know, reasonably open minded, but at the same time, I don't know about ghost stories or things like that. But when I sit down and talk with my mum and stepdad, there is a story that my stepdad tells me all of the time, and he's quite a sensible guy too, but I don't know, the story seems to have shaken him, so I'm gonna tell you it. Ring car at number one. So a lot of you may have already seen this seemingly unexplained video. Every single time I look at this footage, I have a lot of questions. Now it was allegedly caught on Russian police officer's dash cam and features what I can only describe as a time traveling car. Is this proof that time travelers are real? I mean to me, <laughs> like I don't necessarily believe in it, but it looks like it, which makes me question, again, so many things. Let me stop talking and actually show you the footage so you can join me on the freak out here. So the footage starts as the car is turning left, and we can see the traffic at a standstill on the right, and all of a sudden a car is like, boom, out of nowhere, and I mean, literally nowhere. I've watched this over and over again, and I do not understand where this car came from, unless it's like a clever Photoshop video trick, but I don't know if it's not. I've got more questions. Questions. This video was uploaded by Rose Adams on YouTube and has had over a million views. And by the looks of the comments, a lot of people were just as confused as me. Can you explain it? Let me know.